G'day modelling enthusiasts, it's Ron from Ferguson Brothers Rail. In this video today, we're going to make a big old rainforest fig tree. Should be a bit of fun. Now this is actually going into another larger diorama that I'm also building and making a film of. If you want to see what that looks like, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you get notified when it comes out, and I'll hope to see you on that one as well. Let's jump into the build. So what I'm doing here is creating a big fig tree, like the kind of thing you'd see in Southeast Asia. This is the main trunk section with this bit of wood that glues into the diorama to give it a bit of strength. I've just drilled holes in the wood to fix this wire, just with a bit of glue. So you've got these bits coming out here that'll form the roots, um, and I'll cover that with tissue paper and glue to get that nice sort of big fan sort of look you get in those trees. Now at the top here, these are, these are form the main branches, um, and I'll run some thinner wire around those to create the smaller branches that the foliage will glue onto. The main trunk and branch armature is made from thin wire. I'm modelling at 148, so if you were making this for smaller scales, you'd have to use thinner, more delicate wire. The idea here is just to bulk it out and add cylindrical volume. I'm going to start wrapping the trunk before I detail out the branches. It's just a 50-50 mix of water and white glue. The main thing is to keep it really wet. Just like paper mache, we need all the paper to have glue on it. Then brush it out smooth with a soft brush. I'm now moving back to the branches and adding finer detail. Painting on an acrylic gap filler to bulk out the detail and hide some of the wire that's still visible. I'm going to use the same mixture to soak some string which will form the vines. So you can see I'm just running the string up the side here and I've pulled the string apart a bit so I can use some of the thinner strands for the vines. For the gap filler, I'm just mixing it down 50% with water. You've got to make sure you get the acrylic stuff. This is um, flexible and it's soluble with water. You don't want silicon. Silicon is not paintable and you'll create an absolute nightmare. My approach to painting is loose to tight, dark to light. Even though I've used a lighter coloured primer here, we usually start quite dark and rough and work toward lighter highlights and more detail toward the end. The middle bit is just a whole lot of experimentation and adjustment. But you have to have a general vision. For this tree, I want bark that's reasonably light, a mixture of grey and the green tinge of lush rainforest. Since vines are newer growth, they're often a bit lighter and this is perfect for modelling because it adds visual interest through contrast. If you struggle to identify colour, you might want to try using some digital tools to pixelate an image. This can help identify general colours, even if you just use it as a guide. Bark, trees and water are good examples from real life where colour can be deceptive. Another thing I'm conscious of is overall palette. I want the forest part of this diorama to be really consistent, but I also need the tree to look distinct from the rocks behind it. I achieve this by ensuring there's enough warm colours in the paint, colours like umbers, fawns and orange oxides will help here with the tree. Now I'm going to add a dark wash to emphasise the deeper cracks in the model. I'm using one part India ink, one part water and one part isopropyl, which really just helps speed up the drawing. This will give the model more depth because it will create stronger contrast between the deeper darker sections and the higher lighter contours. This workshop vise is really useful for holding the model. Now onto the foliage. A few years ago I was scrounging around and found this synthetic fluff from an old dog bed cushion. I bagged the stuff and have been using it ever since. It's particularly good for smaller trees if you stretch it out. But I'm going to use it here too since I want the canopy of my tree to look like a natural carpet. You'll see what I mean if you come back and watch the next film. If you don't have access to this stuff, you could use other fibrous type products like cotton wool or even steel wool, as long as you can tease it out. I'm gluing it with some green coloured glue, simply because I had the stuff sitting on my desk. I typically use Mod Podge matte for glue since it dries with a matte finish. You really don't want shiny glue on your model. I'll then use a spray adhesive to start applying foam, then lighter finer material to add contrast and a sense of light shining from above.
Soaked the cap in acetone, now it's working. One of the things you'll notice in really good dioramas is control of attention. There's a whole lot of other things going on too, like the setting of intention. But with regards to providing viewers with a sense of intrigue and enjoyment, you have to lead them there using visual storytelling. After gluing the tree into place, it needs some blending into its environment. I had a couple of spare fake rocks lying around, so I've sliced these up to build up the riverbank. To add volume, I'm using a mixture of Sculptor Mold, Mod Podge Matte and various coloured paint. The benefit to colouring your Sculptor Mold for small areas like this is you don't have to mess around getting a paintbrush into tight spots. On top of this, if you need to stick things into it or mess up the surface, you don't have to worry about seeing bright white dust come up. There will eventually be an animal sitting by the river and to help viewers notice him, I'll include something bright in the scene to draw their eye. So let's grow some bright shiny mushrooms in the little clearing beside the tree. I found a few nails and I'm just applying some gentle heat so I can manipulate the nail heads. A couple coats of bone coloured paint to the stems, then some bright red on top with white specks should do the trick. Now I'm going to pick the mushrooms with a set of bolt cutters. An old florist told me once, never arrange flora in even numbers. So I'll use three mushrooms and make them look a little bit organic. Just a little poke with some wire first and then they can be glued in. Well there we have it, a slightly unorthodox shaped tree. Remember this is likely to have a clear box around it so the tree looks a bit strange only growing in one direction. If I was making this tree freestanding, I'd spread the branches more. Big trees also have a lot of lower hanging growth and at this scale, I prefer to use some finer leaf mix which you can buy online for the foliage. I kind of like the idea of putting an eagle nest in here, so let's see if that makes the final scene. Don't forget to subscribe and throw me a like.